What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles, back at you another week, another video. In this video, this is gonna be part of the breeder series, and that is what animals do you need to produce to be successful in breeding? So breeding, you wanna start a reptile business and you wanna be a reptile breeder. Now, that sounds pretty simple. Just go grab a couple thousand dollars, buy some most expensive animals and produce and you'll sell them. Sounds easy, right? Absolutely not. That's not what we wanna do when you start breeding. Now that is an approach, but that is a very difficult approach and you're gonna be relying on heavy marketing. Most people are not great at marketing and social media is just something we do for fun. So if you wanna grow your business organically and you wanna breed snakes for fun, but also have it generate income as maybe a hobby or maybe a business, this is what I recommend and I've said it a bunch of times. Before we dive into the video, I wanna show off, this is a just a hypo boa, she's a hypo jungle. She, she's a low expression jungle. Beautiful animal that I produced years ago. I think she's a 2015 or 2016 animal. Very slow grower for some reason. She eats just like the rest, but she grows really slow and she's a smaller animal. The purpose of what we're trying to do here though is I want to show you that I have simple, inexpensive, affordable animals. Now, why I wanted to pick this animal specifically is to show you that you don't need all of the highest end animals. You don't need to have super expensive morphs in a collection full of that. Why? That is because the majority of people buying reptiles and animals as pets are not buying them to be the next breeder. They might be buying them with a future potential for breeding, but for the most part, they're buying them as pets, not because they want to get into the business. So. I tend to cater and I tend to structure my business around a nice spread where I produce pets for people like this hypo boa just stood out in the litter and I wanted to keep her myself and I also produce the more high end three, four, five, six thousand dollar plus animals and that is so I can cater to a wide variety of people and if you guys know me you know that I don't have the most cutting edge high end collection of reptiles. Now I certainly have some really expensive one of a kind animals but for the most part I have very simple animals, a simple T-positive boa. Not a very expensive snake, maybe a couple hundred, in today's prices maybe four or five hundred, but not a very expensive animal. I have albinos, regular normal albinos, as well as having moon glows and things like that, but for the most part, I'm not chasing the next best thing. That is a very dangerous area to be in from a financial perspective and a very stressful, unfun position to be in when you're actually producing because you are always trying to be ahead of the next person. By playing in this arena, which is a less expensive, more pet friendly arena where people can still produce and have fun with the animals if they want to breed, you are catering to a much larger base of people. Now, this is for two reasons, and we've discussed this, or it's for a bunch of reasons, and I've discussed this in my videos, and we've had these conversations in our Patreon calls. So if you're in my Patreon group and you're a patron, you've heard me say this a million times already, but it is... The majority of people just want a cool pet snake. They don't want to be a breeder. And these animals will sell. So this helps you build your reputation. Now, as these folks become maybe a little bit more experience and they've bought their pet boa, they may want to add, or their pet python or whatever it is, they may want to add the next thing. They may want to try their hand at breeding. And at that point, you can help them get to the next realm as long as you have those animals in house or you recommend somebody who may have those animals. But either way, you just build a great customer and you've also built a relationship with somebody. So that is key when you're trying to start this reptile business is your relationships. Now. A lot of people will also complain about their customers. I'll occasionally do it. You'll occasionally get those ones that give you a headache. But for the most part, that just means that I haven't expanded large enough. If I have people I can complain about, I'm not catering to the right clientele. So if there's those really frustrating people, it's probably you and the type of business that you've built that you're building it to cater to those frustrating people. I love the people who I get to sell snakes to. They give me updates. I, I really just enjoy the customer and you guys who subscribe to these videos. It's always a very positive interaction. You'll occasionally get that person who is negative, but for the most part, you, you need to build your business the right way. And to do that, I really feel you need to cater to all markets. Starting out, do you know that you actually want to deal with those high-end people? Do you know you want to deal with the pet basis? No. So 
buy what you like, breed what you like, and that will help you find the market that you enjoy. I tend to enjoy a whole wide variety of those markets. If I were only dealing with the high-end people, I'd be very stressed all the time. If I were only dealing with the new customers, the new people getting into the hobby, I'd also be very stressed because I'd spend a lot of time answering questions. That was the whole purpose of me starting the Patreon in general, is to free up some more time so that I could cater to everybody and the people who really wanted information would be able to join the Patreon and we could get these monthly calls and stuff like that going. But the second reason I encourage, you know, not being shied away from your base morphs is when you buy a really pretty animal and then you breed it to something else, you're creating a better version of that. So you could just go take a whole bunch of money and buy the absolute best version of any animal, the most expensive animal you could find, or you can make it yourself. And to me, that is a lot of the fun we have with breeding, is making these animals ourselves, at least for me, making the best version of that animal, doing it myself by buying the combinations. The beauty of our hobby is, if you are somebody who enjoys creating animals and, and the, the process of it and really trying to put your mind to, I'm gonna take this beautiful red color and this beautiful orange and I'm gonna mix them together and I'm gonna throw this black into it, I'm gonna mix that together to make a really awesome animal, then I say you really need to start with some quality base animals. And again, you're gonna be able to sell them. That will help you tap into the larger market, help you tap into the, to the lower end kind of pet, less expensive market, and it's just more enjoyable. That is my advice. That is how I've always treated myself and my business, is nobody is above the other. Just because somebody has $10,000 to spend on an animal and somebody else has $200, I'm gonna treat them the same way and and really that's how I think it's necessary. But by getting those skills at all different levels, you're gonna see the difference in the customer. You're gonna see that there's really experienced people who still buy these little kind of simple, beautiful animals. There's also very less experienced people buying the super high-end animals. Doesn't make one person better or worse. Doesn't make one person uh, more of a customer than the other. Where I'm going is I think you need to not be shied away from these base morphs. These base morphs are what got our hobby, hobby started. And if you can't appreciate a normal boa or a hypo boa or a motley boa, you can't appreciate these base morphs. You shouldn't be able to appreciate these super high-end combos because they're all built off this. You need to learn the basis before you can get to the top. That's my opinion. There's, again, all other opinions out there. I respect it if you think differently. That's just my way of thinking is, this is where my passion was in a simple hypo boa. I will never forget that and I will always have them. I have simple, single gene, incomplete dominant, motleys, hypos, jungles, things like that in my collection because I enjoy it. And that's what we should be doing this on is the passion and the enjoyment for the reptiles and the enjoyment for the other keepers in our hobby. That way we can all grow together. If you don't enjoy that, then this is probably not a right business for you. You're looking at it too much like a business and reptiles and animals is not a business unless it can be a hobby first. So with that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Until next week, let's keep it moving.